Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the DJI Inspire 2 with the Sendence remote controller and specifically we're going to be taking a look at the 4 Hawks Raptor SR range extending patch antenna to be used with the Sendence. Now the guys over at 4 Hawks seen my video testing the patch antenna and the Sendence and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at their range extender. So what we're going to do in this video is have a look at it, look at what it is and how it connects onto the remote controller and then I'm going to compare it to the original patch that comes with the Inspire 2 Sendence as well as the Omni Sticks as well and I'm going to give you at the end of this video my honest thoughts if I think it's worth looking at or not. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at what's included in the box and then show you how to fit it onto the remote itself. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look in the box. When you open it up, you will find the antenna located on the top. Now, just like the DJI one that they include, it is a patch antenna. When you flip it over on the back, you will find a couple of mounting posts alongside two RP SMA female connectors for attaching it to the radio itself. Then when you take that out you will also find some accessories now what we have in here is a mounting bracket for actually attaching it to the Sendence remote itself so there are two grub screws which go into the bracket on the side just like that one there and you've then got the adjustable bracket on the side that allows you to adjust the position and we'll have a look at that a bit closer once we fitted it then in the other box when you open this one up you will find a little spanner for fitting the antenna on so you don't need any additional tools as well as the connector cables now these are specially designed cables that go from the rp sma on top of the antenna to the dji connector on the back of the Sendence remote now what they actually have done is put some adapters in so it's a sma to sma on either side you then screw in the adapter which is included with it and that is the fitting that goes directly into the Sendence remote itself. Before we mount it onto the Sendence I thought I'd show you quickly the difference between the 4 Hawks one to the original DJI patch antenna for the Sendence. You can see that it is substantially smaller. Now flipping it around to the back we've got our two antenna ports which I showed you in the unboxing. However you'll notice that there are no other connectors. Now on the original patch we still had our two antenna connectors, one on each side. However, you also had this little CAN bus fitting as well. And this supplied both power to the antenna as well as it allowed it to update the firmware as well. Now, that isn't to say that means it's going to be better. It just shows that it is a different setup. And the nice thing about the Four Hawks one is that it is quite a bit smaller and quite a bit lighter than the original DJI one as well. So putting the four Hawks one together, the first thing we need to do is mount the bracket. And this is done really simply. You simply place it over the top and they do include this little spanner that doubles up as a screwdriver as well. And you can simply drop it into the notches. You can tighten these spring loaded screws down by hand first of all. And then you can tighten them down with the included spanner stroke screwdriver just to make sure that you've got it nice and tight and then you've got the bracket fitted on ready to go. The next thing then is to mount the two antenna cables and again these simply screw in place and what I would do with these is place them upwards, tighten down the connections and then it's ready to mount on to the back of the Sendence itself just like that. Now to fit it onto the back of the Sendence, you simply undo the two screws, place the bracket over the top of the built-in bracket with the remote controller and simply attach the thumb screws and tighten them up one at a time. So we've got that one there. And as you tighten these then, they simply clamp down onto the bracket on the back of the remote. 
and you can easily make sure that the antenna is fitted nice and tight. So once you've got the antenna fitted the correct way around, your cables will be long enough to reach your ports. Now, unlike the original DJ one, which has the screw up connections to hold them in, these ones are simply push fit. You simply take them and push them into the connector and it's all plugged in ready to go. Now the cables are long enough that it allows you to tilt the antenna because of the button system built into the remote. You can simply press it on the side, you can press the button in and tilt the remote antenna down if you want to and have it horizontal or you can push the button in again, tilt it vertically if you were flying with the aircraft above you and there's plenty of space and cable length to make sure that none of these are getting jammed and you don't have to worry about it. Now, one of the nice differences with this antenna is that it is substantially lighter than the original one. It takes quite a bit of weight off the remote and you can notice it instantly. But again, it's still the same setup as the original DJI one. And if you did want to put it down, you can simply fold it back in and put the remote controller down like that. Or alternatively, if you didn't want to lay it on the antenna, you can simply flip it up and it'll rest on its connections like that, making sure that you're not causing any damage to the aerial itself. Okay, so I'm out and about with my Inspire 2 with my St. Denis remote, and I've got the four Hawks patch antenna fitted, and I'm just doing some flight tests with it. Now, I'm not really doing out and out range tests, but I'm just doing some general flight just to get a feel for what I think the signal is like compared to the existing patch antenna and compared to the existing omnidirectional sticks. Now something else to take into account when you are using the patch antenna is its position because remember it is fully directional. So when you are flying with your aircraft out and about normally you want to have it on this sort of angle here pointing at your aircraft. However, if you are flying with your Inspire directly above your head, you are going to want to change the angle of the antenna to have it pointing straight up to allow it to get the best possible signal. So that is something to take into account when you are using a patch antenna specifically. And whilst it does make a difference on omnidirectional sticks, on the patches it makes a far larger difference and can be the difference between having virtually no range at all and having much better range than you would get on an Omni. Now as my Inspire is just over there straight out what we're going to do is push the button drop it down to about that angle there and that is absolutely perfect for what I'm doing here keeping the aircraft sub 40-50 meters. Now the last thing I want to talk about before I go back is the 1080p live feed mode. Now you'll notice I've switched over to an iOS device and that is because the Inspire 2 has the capability of transmitting this live feed back to the remote in 1080p rather than 720p. However, this doesn't work on Crystal Sky, but it does work on iOS. And that is designed to be used in broadcast situations where they want to get the highest possible quality live feed back to the remote controller and then output that via HDMI or SDI depending on what they're doing with it. Now, whilst it does increase the live feed quite substantially, the downside to it is that it reduces range massively as well. And in my last test with this, it can actually be as low as a few hundred meters, especially in the five gigs mode. Now, I haven't done any all out range tests that I'm gonna give you published numbers for, but I have been testing the Four Hawks antenna for the Inspire 2 with that 1080p mode in both 2.4 gigs and five gigs, and I'll be honest, I am extremely impressed. Its range to me outperforms the standard patch antenna quite a bit. Now I'm not doing a comparison here today, I'm simply out and about testing it, but it certainly is delivering what more than what I would expect compared to the other standard antennas. Overall, and that is about it for this video. Now, as I mentioned in the test, I do feel that I'm getting better range on this antenna than I was the original DJI patch. Now, whilst I have done no side-by-side -side checks, in my opinion, doing it especially in that 1080p mode, which really does push it to its limit, for me, it was giving me much better range than I would usually get. Now, these things a lot of the time are subjective and what's better for one person isn't necessarily better for the other. But overall, I have to say I was more than happy 
happy with how it performed. Now, it is slightly smaller and it is lighter than the original patch antenna, but it is a bit more fiddly to fit compared to the DJI one. Now, if you're looking to get yourself a patch antenna, this is probably a lot better than buying the actual DJI one separately because it's cheaper and it also gives you a few other options as well. If you've got the DJI patch, whether it's worth upgrading to it, it's hard for me to justify here and now 100%. However, if you're looking to upgrade your standard stick antennas on either the DJI original remote or the Sendence, then I would probably buy this, as I said, over the DJI patch. That's it for this one. I will put a link to it in the description of this video as well. I want to thank the guys over at 4Hawks for sending this one over to me to have a look at. Um, the information that I have given you is entirely my own, and if I wasn't happy with it, I would say that as well. So if you are interested in it, please do check it out. That's it. Thank you for watching, and I will release another video again soon.